Hello, good evening, and welcome to the uh, next instalment of Insonic Free Samples. Yep, here we are. It's Neil Paddock here. You're having a good day. Uh, I will just very, very briefly mention I've got two websites hosting this stuff at the moment. The one that you're looking at on the screen is called How Can I Make Music with Neil Paddock? And this is the other one, How to Program Drums with Neil Paddock. Um, all the links are identical on those sites, so whichever one you come across first, you can download this stuff from with no problems. Right. That being said, I'm going to focus on how to program drums today. And um, in my previous video, we talked about the reason refill. Today, we're going to talk about the Insonic um, samples, the free sample pack. So it's a reboot, but now this is for non-reason users. So if you use any digital audio workstation, such as Pro Tools or Reaper, or Mixcraft 6, um, or any other kind of things, then this is for you. Okay, so, um, I'll work on the basis that you haven't seen the other video, and keep things relatively self-contained. So, first of all, if you go to the blog, you'll see the latest article um, on the blog page is this one. And so we're interested in the free samples, that's what we're going to be covering today. So let's read the full article. And as ever, a little, quirk, a little quirky thing with Optimize Press is that this lovely picture here doesn't do a thing. <laughs> so ignore that one and head straight down to the bottom if you want to go straight to the downloads and click on this icon just like we did on the other one. And uh, if I click on it, we'll get the raw samples in sfz.zip file. Now it's a bit bigger than the other one, it's 283 megabytes, but this contains all the samples that are in the Reason reboot. Okay, now I'm not going to save it because I've already got it. So how do we use it? Well, that's it. what essentially I think I'm going to do now is can I grab that over here? Let's just see if I can do this. Uh, yeah, I can open the zip file. So what you'll find in here is a samples directory. Now I literally only just created that as a sort of parent directory. So just click down and then you get the subdirectories and the end user license agreement. Now, please read that first because it sets out just a few little uh, rules to keep everyone happy. Um, and then these are the two directories that you're going to need. So, all you do is you grab your bits and pieces and you drag them into whatever folder you have set up for your normal samples. So, this is configured. If you were to set up a, a folder called C samples, uh, just drag that whole lot of stuff in as is, like that. So you'll end up with two separate subdirectories. You're going to have the script files in this one, and you're going to have the uh, reboot in the other. And so, um, let's see. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. You know what to do. Okay, so just drag those into a folder, and let's just quickly drill down while we're here. The raw samples you can see are in here, and if I just go back out again, the SFZs are in there. And let's just open an FZ, SFZ so you know what it looks like. <clears throat> I'll open the heavy brass one for no particular reason. And basically all it is, is a text file. This is a Cakewalk proprietary format. and it basically tells your sampler where to go and get the samples from. So if I was to just highlight something, there's the path for heavy brass sample 024-left.wav. Okay, and there are the rest of them. And so um, I don't want to get into SFZs any more than that for the purposes of this video, but that's just to let you know that each one's set up like that and uh, now we're going to see how they work. So, with that in mind, let's go to Reaper. Gosh, I've managed to talk for five minutes already. 
and I'm going to double click to open a new track. Now I click on my little green FX button and I'm just going to remove what's there already. You might not have to. I click add and I think the sensible thing to use is Dimension Pro. So just to show you on the other screen, I type in Dimension Pro to look for it, highlight it, and pop it straight into my track. So that's primed now to receive something. Okay. Now, um, if you've not seen Dimension Pro or Dimension LE before, um, it's a nice sample player. This one, I believe, is $99. Um, the cheaper one, Dimension LE, is currently $25, and it represents a, a really good uh, buy, in my view. So I definitely check that out with Cakewalk. Um, I'm just going to use the more expensive one just because I had that to hand. Um, so what we're going to do is ignore the top bit. We're going to go straight to this um, load multi-sample screen. And if I click on that once, I've now got to navigate to my uh, C samples directory and load an SFZ file. That's how we basically do this. So let's just see if I can actually find that. I want my little computer icon, don't I? So let's start there. And we'll go C drive and scroll through all this other stuff. And so here we've got the um, C samples folder. I'm going to go in there. Um, I'm not going to go through these in order necessarily. Let's just pick, say, Digital Piano from the list. We're going to open that. And before we're going to hear any noises, I need to prime this track. So I'm going to click and arm the track. I'm going to click the little speaker button and I'm going to set it up to configure it with my Akai MPK49 on all channels. And so, um, with a bit of luck now, we should hear the digital piano. So, the moment of truth. <laughs> oh, there we go. There was a little bit of a time delay while it uh, figured out what it was supposed to be doing. So, that's essentially how you're going to get in there. Now, if you want to hear what these things sound like, I could go through all those now. Or you could watch my previous video, because they're all going to sound exactly the same. We'll do one more. So if you want to load up, say, bottles, same deal. Open up an SFZ. And there they all are. Now, what you can do with this, at the risk of getting into sort of techie stuff, is that you, once you're happy with this, you can save it as a .prog file. Uh, in Dimension Pro and in that directory. I, I'm sensing I should probably not go there today, but just to let you know that you can do that. Um, what you can also do, which is a little bit more straightforward, is you can save in Reaper itself. Uh, you can save this preset. So for example, I can go in, and if I just give it the same name, Bottles, um, then I can call that up next time I go into Reaper directly from there. So that's just to let you know that exists. We'll get into Dimension Pro, Dimension LE saving perhaps another time because it can get a bit problematic and long-winded. And I don't want to bore you guys with, uh, with technical stuff any more than I have already. So uh, that's it, in essentially. So quick recap. You can fire this up in Reaper. Um, go to this part of the screen. Maybe what I'll just quickly show you uh, yeah, I will quickly show you something, a slight difference, which we'll go in and, and have a look at Dimension LE. So I just type that in, pops up on my search. Now, it's a smaller um, synth. It doesn't have the same functionality as Pro, but um, same deal, really. Click on it. Now, I still have to point to my samples uh, directory. So, unfortunately, I've got to do a little bit of running around again. And um, back to there. And now we'll have a different sound, perhaps, for this one. Let's try. Oh, let's have piano one. It's not quite a nice sound. 
So yeah, that's that's a, a nice sound. And um, what I can show you, I think, with this one, is there's a whole bunch of user patches. There's a lovely kind of browser where you can load up songs from. And without, again, getting too techy, I've already gone through and saved my patches as prog files in here. So you can just call call them up. Now this is a slightly different version to the one that's available for download. So that just to show you, I can double click on Mini M. It doesn't sound particularly like a Mini Moog, that one. Um, let's do something else. Let's do Anna Brass. So you've got that option to open to you as well. I'm going to do some kind of saving in dimension as a separate video. It is a little bit problematic, um, just finding everything and where it all goes, just to start with. But just to let you know that that's available. For 25 bucks with dimension, you can't really go wrong. It's a lot cheaper than buying yourself an original in Sonic synthesizer. So that's it, I think, for the time being. As I say, um, please have a go, download it. Um, and essentially as long as you drag those two subfolders onto into somewhere like C samples into that kind of directory or somewhere similar you should be able to fire these things up and start using them. Now there are other synths that you could use so I suppose I could just mention a couple briefly and we're really into all those ones that will open SFZ files. And of course, this is Alchemy. Now, depending on, this is the free player, so it's not the one that you pay 250 bucks for. But in theory, uh, I have had some success in loading up SFZs on this one as well. So here we are, it's, it's remembered the direction from last time. I can call up, let's try something different, Marimba. So now I think I've had this so that if I have two instances open, it complains and tells me to buy the full program. But for single instances, um, it will load them up. So um, that's, that's handy to know. You've also got this screen down here where you can change you can change the qualities uh, it's quite a cool device this one so um, it's worth a look quite a big download you get a ton of patches with it too from camel audio so have a look at that if you've not got a free player um, let's look at one more I think for now so we'll remove that we'll go with uh, SFZ now this is also, not to be confused with SFZ Plus, we're just going to be looking at SFZ. So, uh, how does it work? It's pretty basic, this one. Go in, open up one we haven't had so far, clav one, and we should be good to go. So we're now using SFZ, that's a free player from Cakewalk's website. Um, just be careful with this one, if you have two tracks and multiple instances of this one, you can get rather nasty audio spikes. Reaper will protect you by um, shutting it off. But um, that's the reason I don't tend to use this one more than once. I think somebody came up with a workaround where you have to rename the .dll file and you have to give them different names and you have to load up like SFZ1 and then SFZ2 and SFZ3 and then it doesn't give you all those problems. That's why my recommendation would be spend your 25 bucks, get Dimension LE from Cakewalk. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them, I'm just a happy customer. You can't really go wrong with that. And we'll deal with setting up presets, dot prog files in Dimension in another video. Right, 15 minutes gone already. Sorry, I hope that was useful. And um, I'll speak to you on the next video. Don't forget, download, like, subscribe, favourite. Um, your support's very much appreciated and helps me make even better videos and give you more freebies in the future. Bye.